So this will be a very interesting and fascinating fireside chat. John, want to say hi to everybody? No pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Great, great to be here, Carlos. Always great to see you. Same here. I'm so glad you had time out of your busy schedule. I know it's late on the East Coast, so uh, I know you had dinner, so please don't fall asleep. I can get a little boring sometimes. <laughs> so, I've never had that happen, actually. <laughs> okay. And I see quite a bit of work behind you there. I see you're still hard at it. Oh, yeah. I've got, I think it's close to 30 tax returns that I took a break from because now we're not due till July 15th. It's the first time in all the decades I've been doing this that I actually feel good. You know, last you year. look good. Well, thanks. Last year, I couldn't have done this today. I would have been all wigged out, stressed, and no good to anybody. Yeah. So I, I got a couple of questions for you, John. So economic in impact payments, the stimulus checks, how has that affected your clients who requested bank products? And now the stimulus payments may not be arriving to their checking or savings account. Has that affected you much? Well, you know, our, our customers that uh, offer bank products to their customers, they do it for a variety of reasons. Um, and, you know, each of those customers is in a different situation, but there was some confusion at the beginning. Um, you know, the IRS was working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They had a lot of pressure on them from, um, you know, all aspects, anywhere you can imagine. Uh, was bringing pressure on the IRS and the Treasury to try to get those checks into folks' hands because it was, this is unprecedented, right? I mean, it's um, something a lot of taxpayers, a lot of citizens are going through, um, you know, those that file tax returns, those that don't file tax returns. And so as a result of that, um, well, partially as a result of that, there was some uh, confusion as to what was going to happen with those bank product customers. And so when that first big batch of money that came through, um, you know, if those accounts were open, if they were closed, should the money go back and all those types of things. So each of the banks did what they felt was best for those customers. Um, and I think this last batch actually ended up, you know, very smoothly. The IRS actually finally put out some FAQs on their website um, so the taxpayers could go and get some answers because you couple that with the the get my payment, which is like, where's my refund for the stimulus checks, um, had a, an error on it that said, hey, we're going to send this money back through the same system again, because a lot of those bank product accounts are just temporary accounts, right? And so they get closed. And so the bank sent that money, most of the banks sent that money back to the IRS if the account was closed. And then the IRS would cut that taxpayer paper check based on the the address on their last tax on the tax return that was filed. So there was some confusion when taxpayers would go to get my payment and they would see, hey, they're sending it back to that account again. Yeah, uh, but that's actually not what happened. And so most of those taxpayers within the next week or so, week or two weeks, should get a paper check in the mail. Great. Yeah, those of, the, of us that have been in this industry for a long time, we understand that uh, that it's a temporary account that the uh, bank sets up for the IRS to deposit the funds. And once the bank releases those funds, they close that account. It's, it's right. a temporary account. And the biggest challenge is the tax preparers are not explaining that to the client. So the client well, doesn't in, know. In their defense, right? There was very little information because things were happening so quickly. Um, you know, there was very little information available for the tax preparer. Yeah, who knew that we were going to have a pandemic and uh, close everything down after uh, the peak? <laughs> I, I can't, yeah, uh, it's funny because we, I think more people today have read the, you know, the force majeure clause, the acts of God, you know, the natural disaster clauses and all of their contracts and insurance uh, contracts and none of us ever paid any attention to it before now, right? I'm but I do think, you know, it's interesting because I, one thing the IRS did very quickly, you know, 
I don't remember them ever or any government agency for that matter um, processing this number of payments. Wow. I mean, they said it was the, the largest deposit or the largest disbursement ever made, including, you know, PATH Act disbursements and all of those disbursements. Um, and they, they got the get my payment tool out for folks that, uh, um, you know, filed a tax return but didn't have the right direct deposit information or they filed a bounce due or they just wanted to check the status of their payment. They can go in and enter direct deposit information, assuming it's not already queued up. Most folks today, um, you know, that had a filing requirement, probably they did that very quickly. Amazing. Because I remember uh, the last time we had a stimulus, I think it was back in 08 or 09. It was $300 or $600. Yep. And uh, when we filed our taxes the next year, I don't know if you remember what happened, but uh, the government wanted it back. So are you, <laughs> do you remember that? They took it out of our refund. <laughs> Telling you. I do remember that. Yeah. So we're getting a lot of our clients asking us, am I going to have to pay this back next year? So good news is no. Right. That's the good news. The yeah. good news is no. And I, I got a lot of questions, or at least some questions on, you know, folks that don't have a filing requirement. Yeah. Um, Social Security recipients, maybe they have a grandchild that lives with them and they haven't filed a tax return claiming that grandchild yet. Um, you know, they, the IRS also rolled out the non-filer tool kind of through the free file program where those individuals could go and key in their dependent information and basically file a simple tax return. They can also do that through their you know, paid preparer, can file that uh, real simple tax return. It's normally in the software, at least in our software, they just check a box um, and they can find, basically files a tax return with $1 of interest income. It gets that direct deposit information and the additional dependent information in at the IRS. And then my understanding is if uh, you already filed your taxes <clears throat> uh, and you already got your stimulus payment, but you had a uh, child that was born uh, in the beginning of this year, next year you'll get part of that stimulus back. Uh, have you heard anything yep. about that? You should be able to claim it. Yeah, you should be. The IRS has said you'll be able to claim that. Um, if you didn't get enough stimulus for dependents, for whatever reason, um, you can claim that on your tax return for 2020. That's great. So, so the, the, that good news continues onward. That's good. So it, it, It's going to end up at the end of the day, it's going to be good news. Yeah. 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 We're going to come out of this. So let me ask you this, John, how is Drake, your company, uh, adjusting their operations to the COVID-19 crisis? Well, you see, I'm working at home. Um, we, you know, we did, we, we've done a lot of things at the, of course we have call centers, we have developers, we have a lot of different operations like most technology companies would. Um, we have, uh, we immediately instituted precautions like extra cleaning, you know, every, every hour going through, wiping everything down, you know, at, I don't know if it was every hour, but it was a lot, um, making sure that, you know, folks were reminded to wash their hands. We have little things up with songs you can sing while you rise, your, wash your hands. Who knew that, you know, boy George would come back and tell us how long we have to wash our hands. Um, you know, we're reminding our employees that they don't feel well, you know, don't definitely don't come into the work or folks have, um, you know, pre pre existing conditions or predisposed, you know, to be vulnerable. We've done that. Um, you know, it, it's also very important for us. And it's something that we take very seriously to continue to serve our customers, though. So we instituted a lot more chat um, for folks that could, you know, not necessarily have to get someone on the phone. So we expanded the hours that that was available. And, and we had quite a few folks that have taken advantage of that. And most of our customers are very understanding and, you know, um, but we have instituted everything we can to keep our employees safe. Uh, social distancing, of course, we, 
you know, space people out, rotate our shifts, all those types of things. So that I'm sure, um, you know, you've kind of had to do the same thing in your, your practice there. Yeah. Yeah. My grandson uh, was visiting us a few days ago and uh, he went to the bathroom and then when he was finished, he, he calls me over. And I go, what's going on? He goes, well, I want you to sing happy birthday while I wash my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cute. <clears throat> our, our kids, our kids have learned social distancing very quickly, haven't they? Yeah. And our grandkids. And our grandkids. Yeah, they have. Yeah, my son's walking around here with his uh, face mask on, you know, and uh, I'm not a, do I'm not a medical doctor, but uh I think when you're outside in the sunlight and it's a little windy, I think the virus really hates sunlight and I think it hates wind. So I think most of the time you're going to get in trouble is when you're wearing, when you're not wearing the mask inside your home where it's darker and, and damper. But anyway, I don't need to tell you that. I just tell my kids that. I'm not touching that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is, uh, is Drake still going to continue the update schools going forward? That is our plan today. Okay. Um, of course, the good news is we, three or four years ago, we, we instituted uh, several of our schools. We, we live, we already have the technology to live stream those. Um, so we already have the, the apparatus in case it's not uh, smart you know, to, to have the mass gathering. And we were, I, I hope so. I hope every, our schedule is still working. We're still planning on having them. We're excited about being in Vegas at the same time you guys are. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to uh, uh, attend one of your events normally because I'm off doing something else, but uh, this was the year and it still is. I'm, I'm optimistic. We're going to be able to, you know, do something together with our, our two big events that we have out there. Oh, well, that's going to be great, man. We're going to, we're going to be able to dance some mariachi to some mariachi music <laughs> on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we're going to go out and dance to some salsa music. Of course, not with each other, with our wives. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> my wife would, my wife would do it well. I will say that, but I don't, I would make sure where there was no, uh, that Tony wouldn't around, wouldn't not be around with a video. Yeah. running whenever uh, I was yeah. attempting to do that. Yeah, you got to watch out my him. gift and call. He's dangerous. <laughs> so are your, are your Drake training schools open to the public? Yeah, mostly, you know, our, our, our training is really for, I don't, I don't know that we have a hard and fast rule. You have to, you know, be one of our customers to come, but a lot of what we do revolves around, um, like even when I teach tax law or tax updates, I usually work in how that changes in the software. And so how do you, um, you know, if we were gonna talk about the simple return, which we wouldn't because it would all be done hopefully, but I would show that as an example in the software. So a lot of the content would be relevant to someone that's not a Drake user, they would be more than welcome to attend but they would also find that a good chunk of it would be related to Drake products. Right. That's great. But we're not going to shut anybody out. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I got a few people I'm going to send over there. That's why. Well, bring them on. We're excited to have them. All right. Great. Now this year, uh, and, and I think in the past, you, Drake has also offered some of these courses in Spanish. Will that continue? We do. Oh, we hope to expand it, right? We have some great folks that, uh, uh, whose Espanol is really, really good. Uh, it's their native tongue. And, um, you know, we, we um, have that both in our education department and in our support and sales departments. We all have folks that, you know, are bilingual, some are trilingual. Um, I, you know, most of us, uh, in Franklin, anyway, we speak both English and Southern. Um, yeah, that's Southern, man. That's, the... that's Southern trips me up every time. <laughs> well, we do. You know, a lot of the one thing that I don't mean to sound like a sales pitch, but uh, a lot of folks may not know that we have a, all of our help 
uh, you know, any help screen in Drake is available in Spanish. Um, so it, it's there to kind of help, you know, bridge that gap if there is one. Yeah, that's great. So let me ask you this. Can you describe Grunt Works and tell us what that's all about? Sure. So um, glad you asked. Uh, so Grunt Works hey, hey. is basically you you scan documents in you pump them through the grunt work system and um and, and let me just paint you a picture so your client brings in a grocery bag full of stuff right and in that may be w-2s there may be 1099s there may be their grocery list there may be handwritten notes you know whatever is in that that mess and so I can remember back when I was in public practice, what we did because we wanted to keep a copy of everything is you, you went there and you, you manually put them into piles and you sorted them out, right? Here's all their charitable contributions. Here's all their 1099s. Here's their W-2s. And then either back, this tells you how long ago it was, we'd go to the copier and copy them and then organize them, right? So we had an organized file. One thing that Grunt Wars does is, um, you know, for, I think it's only, I forget what it is, like a nickel upside down, backwards, however it is. And it will actually send you back an organized PDF automatically, well, not automatically, it runs through the system uh, for your files. So that's the first, just that organization and standardization. It'll put all your W-2s together, your 1099s together, all those handwritten notes go down in a big bucket down at the bottom. It doesn't actually, you know, tell you what they're saying, but it does tell you that, you know, you have these other documents down here we didn't recognize. Um, and then it's in a PDF, so you have everything standardized. Every time you open up a PDF for a client, the next time, all of the W-2s are always in the same place. And that's called our organized light product. That's just a few pennies uh, per page. And then it, it, my, it can um, elevate from there the service. So if you think about, in these days when potentially we have staff that, you know, because we have a July 15th deadline, maybe we've laid off our temp staff. Uh, maybe we don't need as, you know, we don't have as much work coming in. Uh, we don't have as many staff working on tax returns. Grunt Works will actually take a, a bunch of those documents, especially 1099s, W-2s, even 1099Bs, brokerage statements, and it will parse those out and send back an import file that will import that into the tax software and basically do the first step of tax prep. So all that you're doing is reviewing that. So it can basically be like a staff person for you. Man, that's, <clears throat> that's truly artificial intelligence, unless you got a little, uh, you know, Southerner back there straightening things out and putting it back. <laughs> Well, we do. One of the nice things about the final product, especially for that import, is we do have, you know, it gets scored and then humans can go in and look at it and say, this isn't right. And they'll actually fix it. So we shoot for 100 percent accuracy on that. Yeah, that sounds totally amazing. Can't wait to try so it. You are getting a full service package and it all stays here in the United States. You know, we're not sending anything. Um, out of, so you have to have a 7216 consent. It's all here in the United States. Wow, that's great. So let me ask you this, does Drake offer a do-it-yourself um, online program? Um, well, we do have an online program um, for folks that would like to do their own tax return, 1040.com. It's not a it's not a big part of our business, but it is something that we do. It's consumer facing. Uh, program that uh, um, you know that we make for people that like to do their own tax return. Great. We do also. We also have, um, and I think you mentioned this to me earlier. Um, you know, we have a portal that um, you know if your clients need to get those source documents to you and they don't want to come into your office, um, they can use um, Secure File Pro, and you can just send them a quick email we have something called the guest exchange. So it doesn't have to be a permanent account for them where they have to remember a password all the time. Um, and they can just log in, upload their docs to you. And then of course we like to think you could just send them up through Gruntworks and 
you know, you don't really have to touch any of that until you're ready to review the tax term. Yeah. Here, Tony's going to show us uh, what it looks like. Oh, there you go. Nice, Tony. Yeah. Man, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not in charge of doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'd probably be on uh, the IRS's uh, hot list site. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's great. So, uh, so as it this is also, you know, oh, as, has, is a great place to for the client to interface with, and it also has other functionality, backup files, and that kind of stuff. So, it's a great little product. How long has Gruntworks been available? Oh wow, uh, five or six years, maybe longer. Um, quite some time now yeah i want to i want to try it so how can a tax pro leverage grunt works in this time of you know shelter in place six foot distance from each other you know tell us how can a tax pro uh, leverage uh grunt works well, that's a great question. And we really, you know, you may have clients that want to drop their stuff off, right? But you may also have clients that want to just upload it through the Secure File Pro. Either way, um, it's a great way for the, the tax pro to just submit documents to Gruntworks, have them basically, uh, you know, through the, the program, programmatically give them the ability to do data entry. So it just makes them more efficient. Um, I will bet you, Carlos, that a lot of tax pros today are trying to figure out their their new cadence, right? What's my, now that my April 15th is not my urgent date, my drop dead yeah. date, when everything has to get done, how do I figure out my cadence? Well, you know, with grunt works, the cadence could be the tax return comes in, I give it to them, I give it to grunt works within a few hours, maybe a day. It comes back to me, and then when it comes back in, it's already X percent done, and all I have to do is review it. So, especially as we're trying to figure out how to budget our time, how to how many hours a day am I working, um, how urgent is all of this? When do I need to get them done? Um, I think Gruntworks allows you to kind of I won't say level the curve, but you know, smooth things out a little bit to where you're not wasting time. Uh, keying in data. Well, that sounds <clears throat> that sounds great. Makes you more efficient, and um, <clears throat> sounds sounds like something we need to work out on. So, John, tell us some of your latest challenges. Since you're an executive, you're running a team, uh, you're running strategies. What are some of the challenges that you have faced uh, recently? Oh man, uh, this has been a tax season for the ages, hadn't it? I mean, um, I think you and I, Carlos, were close to the same age. Yeah. Um, I've been, uh, you know, graduated college in 1986. My dad was a sole practitioner, CPA, and um, you know, so I've seen tax seasons my almost my whole life. This has been the one that I will point to and say that was the most challenging ever. Yeah, um, I think we we ended up, you know, especially toward the tail end of this tax season with the the how do we adjust to something we never thought would happen. And you have plans, right? We all have policies and procedures that we put in place, whether it's um, to deal with the the force majeure, right? The acts of God. How do we deal with it if a, if a data center shuts down? Or how do we deal with it if this, we never really thought about having to deal with something that was going to impact our entire country. If I were to tell you at some point, the IRS was going to stop processing paper returns. And they're not going to tell us when they're going to start processing paper returns. They're going to stop answering their telephone. And they're not going to tell us when they're going to start answering their telephone. I mean, we really couldn't think about 
unless someone was trying to sell us more insurance, um, you know, trying to scare us, we we never really contemplated this. So it's been very challenging as we, and as we think about things going forward, how do we strategize about communicating with our customers? How do we ensure that we have ways to help them help their customers? Because, you know, it, it's essential right now. Folks need their tax refunds and need to make sure they meet their tax filing obligations more than ever. Um, and, and, or fill up, you know, get their financials for their SBA loans or whatever those are. I mean, we're talking people that are in distress. Yeah. And if someone would have told me five years ago that the tax, well, if they told me 10 years ago that the tax industry uh, was going to be the primary point to, um, you know, have our nation's largest healthcare initiative, I would have told yeah. them that's not going to happen. <clears throat> right. But now we're on the front we're on the front edge of this as the tax industry. And, you know, we as tax preparers, sometimes we think of ourselves as a small piece. Um, you know, we're out here by ourselves. A lot of, a lot of folks are in small towns. They may just deal with a, you know, they do a couple hundred clients that they serve very well, but we're really part of something big here. Um, you know, getting that, that stimulus payment in folks' hands and helping them meet their tax obligations has been a, um, a really big challenge. And I think that I, don't, I won't just say it's Drake software, but it is across the industry. I've been so proud to see how my colleagues like you and, um, you know, those like you in your organization and in our, our customer base have stepped up to the plate and decided that they were going to help their customers in, um, you know, if they had to work in their laundry room, um, they were going to help their customers. And, um, I've been extremely proud to be a part of this industry while they've done that. And, um, you know, I don't know that that answered your question. I think, you know, for us, as we've made tough decisions about how do we balance um, service with safety, um, I think having core values set first helps you do that because you can always think about what's your priority. And so, so continual, continually, evolving that um what it looks like you may not change the value itself but you found a new way to apply it um, who thought we would apply it to a pandemic well here we are yeah um anyway that's that's probably me rambling on but well you know <clears throat> and like in our practice and like i'm sure in yours and all your customers we spent four months in tax season and then we spent eight months planning the next tax season Right. Yep. So this tax season was already planned last year and everything's in disarray since they announced this pandemic. So we're all, you know, there's a lot of people feeling a uh, crisis. They're feeling um, challenged. They're feeling left out. Uh, imagine all those poor people that are on uh, unemployment. Uh, it's just uh, something that, you know, we never expected, certainly. And I think it's going to change the way a lot of us do business. And uh, it's, it's just something we're going to have to adjust to. We weren't expecting this virus that was highly contagious. But I can only imagine what happened to the Native Americans when the Spanish first landed here and they caught their first colds. Mm you know, and they caught the flu, stuff that they never had before. It just ran through the nations like wildfire. And, and I think that's what the government is doing now is they're trying to say, look, it's only taken us five or 600 years to figure this out. So <laughs> let's do it this time without killing several million people. Right. And right. That's, what, that's what keeps me from going insane. I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> well, you know, um, I'm, I'm normally not a big, uh, cheerleader for the government, right? Yeah. Big government. And, you know, most entrepreneurs are more, um, uh, you know, we're, we're more self-reliant, those types of things, but I've been pretty proud of what I've, I've experienced watching, um, you know, our, our federal government and our state governments, uh, respond to this crisis and, um, 
I, it was funny. It's funny to me to see the difference in the way that uh, different regional governors respond and the way they treat reporters and the way they talk about the other governors and, you know, um, but I think by and large, it's been a really positive response to a very negative event. Right. So true. Now, John, do you have any questions for us? Well, um, I'm always interested in, um, you know, one thing I, I mentioned before, I, I am curious how, how you prioritize the work that you're doing today. Like, how do you know, uh, do you base it on if a client is just in dire straits to get their taxes filed or do you put your refund returns on top? Um, how do you prioritize your work, Carlos? Well, <clears throat> we pre-schedule all of our appointments. So when you come in to get your taxes prepared, First, we'll interview to see if you've changed your address, if you've changed your marital status, uh, if you've added any dependents. And then we'll ask you, hey, John, does this date and time work for you for next year? Because I'm going to pre-schedule your appointment right now. Uh, okay. So we pre-schedule that appointment. And so generally, everybody who wants their re refund quickly with a bank product, or they're getting a refund, or they just want to know how much they owe, they're all going to come in around the first three or four weeks of tax season. And then we mix in the walk-ins between that. So this way, our tax season's already planned out. So my, my other question is this. Assuming you can have your conference in Vegas, what's the one thing in that conference that you enjoy the most. And if someone were to say, we need to stop doing that, Carlos, you would say, no, 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 no. We're gonna do this every year. What is that? I would say uh, it would be our after, on our Tuesday night mariachi concert and our Wednesday night pool party. Th those things are just, you've been sitting there for seven or eight hours, listening to speakers, listening to, you know, tax topics, uh, trying to understand um, strategic planning, uh, new changes, man, you need a break. So I like to, we like to give everybody a break as soon as it's over, that stays. <laughs> <laughs> and is it true uh -oh. that you do not allow ties? <laughs> Well, it's true that we don't allow ties as the only thing you wear. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all the questions true. I have. I'm not going there. <laughs> that's that's the only restriction we have. That's good. That's good. But yeah. Well, this has really been a lot of fun. I appreciate your time and I appreciate your friendship. Uh, your candor. Thanks for answering our questions. And, um, you know, I have Tony Martinez in here. He's, he's my assister in this case. Do you have any questions for John? Uh, no, Tony? thank you guys. Let me get on camera to say hi to the crowd. Uh, yeah, we've hey, got Tony. John, nice seeing you. We have a consistent uh, flow of uh, people watching us. And this is awesome. Uh, being able to give our members an insight of what you guys are experiencing is exactly what people want to know and want to see. So thank you guys for making this happen. You bet. Thank well, you. Thanks for having me. That was always, always great to talk to you, Carlos, even well, if there were people listening in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to watch out for those whistleblowers, don't we? <laughs> so, all right, John, let's do this again real soon. All right, let's do it. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. Thanks. All right, you too. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>